One pound ninety. Daylight robbery. It's dark, Dave. Or moonlight robbery, then. Still criminal. Oh. Oh, so is this coffee, Nicker. I'm sorry, it's a trading standards matter. I'm powerless to act. No, you're not. You forgot the sugar. Romeo 410 Uniform Hotel Mike heading west on Larkfield Street turning south onto Camber Road turning east onto Emily Way Emily Way, we've lost him. Is anyone awake out there? Sorry, Dave. We're on standby for DS Bolton's nightclub raid. Yeah, me too, Dave. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, if any of you get bored, there's a lunatic going down Emily Way at about 90. 340 from Sierra Oscar. Bring your vehicle check, Dave. Should be a dark green Rover 800. Last registered keeper, Donald James. 41 Sedco Avenue. No reports. Received, Gary. Right. Let's see if he knows where his car is. Good. Oh. Nice area. Yeah, if you can find it. Bought me by the scenic route, did you? Well, I thought it was a shortcut. <laughs> Let's see if Mr. James is in. Ah, oh, Don James? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I thought it would be you. Uh, Mr. James, your car. I know, I know. Uh, Have you driven the vehicle? Yes, Is yes. There? It was me. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll pay for any damage. I, I was just stupid. I, I should have stopped. Have you been drinking tonight, Mr. James? No, no, not at all. I'm uh, just a bit shaken up. Uh, I've never had an accident before. Yeah, well, I can understand that, but nevertheless, I'm afraid we're going to have to breathalyze you. Well, look, can we do this inside? But certainly. Nothing. I told you. I haven't had anything to drink. So, are you going to tell us what did happen? Well, like I said, I was just tired. I'd been working late. I wanted to get home. When I hit that other car and saw you, I just panicked. You're going to tell me I should have stopped, aren't you? You should have stopped, Mr James, and I'm going to report you for failing to stop and failing to report an accident. Well, I'll, I'll pay for any damage, of course. You certainly will. It's a shame you've just bought that nice new car out there. You could be getting the bus for a while. Anyway, good night. Dave. <clears throat> Another failing to stop. What is it, Grand Prix week? Yeah, a pedestrian was knocked down on Loftus Street a short while ago. Harry Palmer, he's in surgery at St Hugh's. Any witnesses? Yeah, luckily. Uh, Mrs Rykansky, she lives at number 34. Can you get over there and have a word with her? I'm going to go to St Hughes and then I'll see you back at the scene, all right? Yeah. Uh, now, Dave. Mr Palmer was crossing on the zebra, just there. It was very quiet, but then this car came flying apart and hit him. Do you have any idea what kind of car it was? It is. It was just like Mr Rosewater's. Mr Rosewater? I think it was a Volvo. A Volvo? There we are. That's a Rover. Ah, yes. I knew it was something Japanese already. Yeah. Did you notice anything else about the car? Anything unusual? Unusual? No, I, d I don't think so. Well, the number of people inside, the colour? White. The car was white? No. The driver was white. The car was green. The car was green? Right, so the car was green, the driver was white. Was anybody else inside the car? 
Well, I don't suppose you noticed the registration number at all. Right. Thanks for your help, Mrs. Rakansky. If um, if you do remember anything else, could you just give me a call at Sun Hill? Um, I remember thinking when I saw him that he would probably have an accident. So stupid. But well, why? It, it's so dangerous to drive with only one headlamp working. Nice night for it. Yeah. Well, thanks for the lift. Yeah, any time, sir. Hey, what's that? The victim's clothing. How is he? He's dead. Hello, Dan. Oh, you I understand there's a witness. Oh, yeah, Dave. Yeah, well, it looks like that man was obviously using the zebra crossing um, and the car that hit him was travelling from this direction. Probably at speed, wouldn't stop. The witness says that it was a rover with one of its headlights out. Mm. Well, the victim didn't make it, so it's now a photo. You got anything? Oh, the usual. A few pieces of headlight lens and uh, some paint from the bodywork. Right, well, you might find something in this lot, the victim's clothing. OK, but uh, even if I do, you're looking at a few weeks to get an accurate match. Well, a make and model will be enough for now. I might be able to tell you that in the next few hours, so if there's enough material. Great, thanks. Sarge, this would have been right on Donald James's route home, wouldn't it? Would it? Well, we lost him on Merrily Way. If it had gone straight to Sedcott Avenue, it'd have gone right past Oh, it. I see. You can remember your way around now, can you? This witness of yours, she definitely thought that the headlight was smashed. She said it wasn't working. Oh, well, you see, there's a difference. Oh, Sarge, with all due respect, we lost a dark green rover with a headlight out which was travelling at speed in this direction just before Mr Palmer got hit. Now, it might have just been a coincidence. All right, all right. We'll pay Mr James another visit, but only to verify his route, and you let me do all the talking. Hello? Is Mr James in? Uh, yeah, that's my dad. C come in. Thank you. Simon, who is... Hello again, Mr James. I, uh, thought we'd sorted everything out. Yeah, there's just a few questions. Of course. You've, uh, you've met my son, Simon, then? Simon? I I'm sorry to come barging in like this. No, that's all right. You've, uh, you've got your job to do. Yeah. Right, well, it's time you're in bed, Simon. Yeah. Good night. Good night. He's, uh, he's a bit upset by all this. Yeah, well, it's hardly surprising, really. Is his mother home? No, she doesn't live with us. Oh. Right, well, fine away. Yeah, we just wanted to check your route home after the accident. Well, I, um, came along Loftus Street, same as I do every day. And did anything unusual happen? No. Right. Well, we'll be in touch. Yeah, well, anything I can do to help, uh, I'll pay for the damage. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've already said that twice. Good night. Good night. Good night. There's something I don't like about him. Like what? Well, for a start, I think he's lying. Well, what's that based on, a hunch? Well, he's just told us he's come along Loftus Street. Well, well, you just think he's lying, so he probably didn't come along Loftus Street. Well, you're walking back to the station, are you, Dave? Look, look. Both the headlights are smashed. When we first saw him, they were both working. I was blinded by him when he came round the corner. Yeah? Well, the accident we saw broke the offside light. Mrs. Rykatsky said there was only one light working on the car. So something must have happened to the other one between Loftus Street and here. He is lying. Right, we'll go back in. We'll see whether it'll come down to the station, answer some questions on tape. Are you sure those lights are working? Yes, yes. I could just give you the spare key. Mr James, a man was knocked down and killed on Loftus Street earlier tonight. Do you know anything about it? What? We're going to have to ask you to come down to the station and answer a few questions. It's just for the record. What's that to do with me? I mean, you, you don't, don't think I... We don't think anything yet. We're just trying to rule out possibilities. The possibilities? But that's ridiculous. Well, you won't mind coming down to the station then, will you? Now, look, I've been as helpful as I can about this. I've answered all your questions and I've accepted the consequences, but if you're going to try and pin some hit and run... Hang on, hang on. Nobody's trying to pin anything on anybody. Mr James, we are simply asking you to come down to the station, answer a few questions... No, no, absolutely Wait, not. Why don't you just leave me alone? Calm down, calm down now, come on. James, I'm arresting you for causing death by reckless driving. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I don't believe this is not happening. I'm afraid it is. Simon, I... Uh, come on. What's going on? 
Look, we just need to ask you down a few questions. Uh, you'll be all right on your own, yeah? Yeah, sure. Look, will he be home later on? Uh, probably. Um, did he mention anything when he came in about an accident? He said that he'd hit someone's car and that you'd followed him. He said you might come round later on. Look, why are you arresting him? Well, it's just a formality. It's nothing to worry about. Look, uh, if you do remember anything else or you need to speak to somebody, can you contact me at Sun Hill on PC Quinnan? Do you want to write that down? Uh, yeah, sure, I can. Mr. James, knocked down and killed on a road that you told us you were speeding down at that time. But I didn't hit anybody. A forensics expert is looking at your car as we speak. Now, he's already found some of the headlight glass at the scene of the accident, and he's got the victim's clothing to look at yet. With an impact of that sort, there's bound to be some glass embedded in it. Maybe he can help you put your headlights back together again. <laughs> You don't understand. No, I don't understand, Mr. James, because you're not telling me the whole story. I, I've told you what I know, all right? I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't. Are you all right, Mr. James? Interview suspended at 0016. Right, I want him to see the FME. Come on, let's get you back to your cell. It's just a panic attack. Nothing serious. I've given him something to calm him down. Leave it for about ten minutes. He should be all right, then. Great, thanks very much. Good. Coffee. Yeah. Bit of thinking time won't hurt, James. I reckon he's just about ready to cough. Looks like his story's falling apart before our eyes. Would you like to share this insight with us, Dave? Well, why do you think he's got the screaming head dabs? He doesn't know what to do except hide behind some light and it falls apart completely. Yeah, so why keep on lying? I mean, wouldn't you want to get it all off your chest by now? Maybe, yeah, but I'm I... just trying to keep an open mind, Dave. That's all. Dave, someone's asking for you at the front desk. Somebody got out of the wrong side of bed this morning. Kathy and withdrawn, I think. I need to talk to you about Dad. Well, don't worry, he's all right. We'll probably need to keep him here for a few hours yet, though. No, it's not that. I need to tell you something. Well, right, come, come in here. Take a seat. OK, fire away. Well, it's just something my Dad said earlier. I, I didn't know what he meant. Go on. Well, when he came in, he was really freaked out. He was, like, shaking and everything. So I asked him what happened, and he said what I told you earlier. What, that he'd hit a car and that we'd probably be around? Yeah, but then he said something to himself. I hope he's all right. I didn't know what he meant. Did you ask him? <sighs> he just said it was something at work. He doesn't normally get bothered about work. What's going on? Somebody was, um... Knocked down and killed earlier this evening in Loftus Street. The driver didn't stop. There's a possibility that your father might have been involved. You think he did it? Well, we, we don't know. We just need to explore all the possibilities, that's all. You think my dad killed someone? Simon, I... What happened to him? What's going to happen to my dad? It's quite a serious offence. He'd go to prison, wouldn't he? It's possible, yeah. Look, nobody said that it was your dad. Yeah, but you think it was, though, don't you? Otherwise, he wouldn't be here, and neither would I. I'll need to take a proper statement. How old are you, Simon? Fifteen. Right, then we need an adult present. Does, uh, does your mum live anywhere near here? No, no, not really. Well, look, do you have to bother her? Would you prefer if it was someone else? Yes, really. OK, I can arrange for a social worker. There might be one here if we're lucky. If not, then there might be a bit of a wait. I'm not in a hurry. You did the right thing, Simon. So my dad always told me, do the right thing. I've told you the truth. We have information that links you with the incident, Mr. James. What information? Well, I, I can't reveal that. Simon. I want to see a solicitor. Have you got a minute, Jim? Yeah. He's asked to speak to you. Seems quite reasonable. I don't see any reason why not. Hmm? I'm just going to start asking where he buried the loot, that's all. Oh, I'll never score. You wanted to talk to me? Yeah, I... Look, your solicitor's on his way. Wouldn't you prefer to wait till he gets here? No, there's something I have to tell you now. 
Right. Okay, I'm far away. Simon was driving the car, not me. I was at home all night. He came in just before you arrived. He said that he'd hit someone else's car, that you'd seen it and chased him. I was covering for him. Why? Because my dear son is basically a nasty little thug. I've always let him do what he wants. I suppose that's been my mistake. He's been getting worse for years, but really it's only in the last few months that he's become uncontrollable. He's, uh, he's only 15, isn't he? I mean, who taught him to drive? I dread to think. It was just up and down the street at first, then round the block. I think it impressed his mates. And then a few weeks ago, we got the new car. Tempting fate, really, wasn't it? He didn't mention anything about knocking anyone down, but when he came in, he was raging. I, I was terrified. He told me what to say to you. I tried to talk to him, but he, he started to get violent. I've got in a bit over my head, haven't I? Well, uh, all right, Mr. James. Look, I'll arrange to take a full statement from you as soon as your solicitor gets here. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to go on record about this. But if what you told me is true, then... Well, Simon may be a monster officer, but he's my own flesh and blood. This is a family matter. We can sort out our own problem. May I remind you that a man has been killed? That hardly makes it a family we matter. We don't even know for sure that it was Simon. Yeah, that's a very good point, Mr. James. Because so far you haven't given me a single reason to believe a word you've said. But I was at home all night. Well, can anyone verify that? Yes, yes, my wife. Uh, my ex-wife. I called her about half past eight. I mean, you can check up on that, can't you? Did your ex-husband call you this evening? Uh, yeah. Donald rang at about, oh, let's see, half past eight it would have been. And what was he ringing for? Oh, well, you know, just for a chat, really. He often rings you, does he? Well, no, not really. We're not all that close anymore. So he rang tonight just to have a chat about the weather? <sighs> all right, what's going on? Uh, there's been an accident. Now, we're not certain, but there's a chance that Donald's car was involved. A pedestrian was killed. According to Donald, Simon was driving the car at the time. Now, if you were having a conversation with Donald while that was happening, we need to know what was said. It might get Donald out of a great deal of trouble. And to get Simon into it. I'm getting the impression he can do that by himself. Um, why don't I make some coffee, yeah? Donald asked me to go back to him. He's never done that before. How long have you been separated? Just over a year. I left when Simon began to be really uncontrollable. My ex-husband thinks it's all my fault. And what do you think? I think it's all his fault, obviously. Do you think Simon could have taken the car? <sighs> Wouldn't surprise me in the least. His dad sounded desperate. He wouldn't have asked me back unless I he... mean, we met Simon earlier. He seemed all right to me. Yeah, <laughs> he would. He's not stupid. Don't think that. He'll look you in the eye and swear blind he's as pure as a driven snow. And you'll believe him. Four eight from Sierra Oscar. Got a message from the DSE for you, Sarge. <sighs> yeah, go ahead, Gary. The glass at the scene and in the victim's clothing matches. Definitely a Rover 800. Received. Thanks, Gary. Right. Let's go and see if he's up, shall we? Oh, hi. Yeah, sorry to call so late, Simon. No, it's all right. I was up. Too busy worrying about Dad to sleep, really. Why don't you go over to your mum's? No, it's all right. I'd rather stay here just in case anyone phones. I mean, you know, you wouldn't know where I was, would you? Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, we would. We've just been round to your mum's. So, is there any news? No, no, actually, yeah, it was you that we wanted to ask a few questions, if that's all right. Uh, I thought that's been an adult present. Oh, I think we'll manage without. Can we come in? Yeah, sure, of course. Have you uh, ever driven a car yourself, Simon? No, I'm only 15. No, I didn't ask you how old you were. I asked if you'd ever driven a car. Well, no, of course not. Well, what's this got to do with anything? So, when we dust the car down for fingerprints, it's unlikely that we'll find any of yours on the wheel. 
What's he been telling you? Just answer the question. What's my dad been saying? Or, if you prefer, we can continue this down at Sun Hill. you for causing death by reckless driving. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Kids today. No manners. Oh, great. The cavalry's arrived. Let's hope they got room for our boy racer. Thanks for your help, guys. Really appreciate it. Can you just stick him on the bench for now with the rest of them? Sorry, sir. This one's ours. Well, there's no room at the inn, I'm afraid. Sergeant Cry's bed and breakfast are a bit full up. Well, what about the detention room? It's been used, I'm sorry. You've just got your time in a bit wrong. Ten minutes earlier. Bob, I'd like to put this one in for you, please. Simon James. I am a bit swamped, Jane. He's going to have to wait. What's going on, June? Is he related to Donald James? Yeah, why? Is there a problem? He's taken up one of my cells and he's not very happy about it. Actually, I'd like to have a word with him. June. It's completely kosherable. Believe me, Well, I do, as it happens. We've asked Simon and he wasn't at all happy about it. You've asked him. <laughs> well, what did you expect us to do? Do you honestly think we're going to write family matter case closed on the file? So what's going to happen? It's very hard to get a conviction in these cases, Mr James. We will only report Simon for prosecution if we're certain that we've got enough evidence. Now, have you thought any more about making a statement? Absolutely not. No way. Would you like to explain that to Harry Palmer's family? <laughs> Look, Simon's my son. My only child. Now, maybe he's no angel, but that's the way things are. You were asking me to send him to prison. I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. All right. Well, your ex-wife is happy to make a statement about the phone conversation you had earlier, so let's get you out of this cell. What do you mean? Well, I mean, obviously it would help if we had a statement from you, but I'm confident that we've got enough to go on. I'm afraid there's a waiting list for this cell. Bob, I'd like Mr. James to be able to return in a week. I have to wait his turn. Would you like to sit over there, please? Hi, Dad. It's the food line. Come on. Yeah, Look, Simon, Would I... you tell them, mate? You told them I did it, didn't you? Do you really think they're going to believe you? They do, Simon. No, they don't. That's ridiculous. Tell them the truth. Tell them you did it, Dad. Did what? You know what I'm talking about. You run over that bloke. Tell him it wasn't me. Tell him, Dad. What's it like, Simon? Hey? Driving a car? Pretty exciting, is it? Makes you feel really grown up, right? Stop it! He's lying! I'll tell you what it's like to be grown up. You have responsibilities. You have to be answerable for what you do, Simon. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing the right thing. I'd like to make a statement, please, Sergeant. Dave, if you'd like to bring the lad over. <laughs> You can do this in the morning, if you prefer. Let's get it over with. Well done. You made the right decision. This isn't the right decision. There is no right decision. I'm about to help you send my own son to prison. What's right about that? <laughs>